What's up, guys? It's Dawson and Jordan here do, uh, doing uh, a video on breeding mealworms and some other stuff like breeding crickets and waxworms. So, right now, we just started a couple days ago. Well, I did. And I got a fresh batch of a thousand mealworms today. So, really, the first step of this is just throwing them in a container um, filled with. Cheerios or cornflakes or whatever cereal you oh, got. Yeah. yeah. And usually start off with like a thousand would be pretty good. And then you just, every day you check for uh, puberties. And puberties are just like the mealworms gone into cocoon form. I don't have any yet. Yeah. We're not, and then they go into cocoon form and then they develop into beetles. And you must take them out as soon as they develop into beetles or they'll start to eat um, the mealworms. So when I take them out, which I don't have any beetles yet, but I'm going to put them in these little cups. They used to be mealworm cups, but you know, now they're empty and I save them up. So I just put two in each one, and then when they lay their eggs, I move them, because if you don't, they'll eat their eggs. And then it takes like a how much? How long do you say Jordan will take? Um, two to three weeks, I'm pretty sure. Two to three weeks for them to hatch. <coughs> so yeah. And for crickets, we don't have any yet. But when we do get crickets, we will be setting up a setup for them. And usually, it will take a breeding box, not that size, but a small one, and. We'll fill some little dishes up with cricket diet, carrots, and then some water in the laying box for the crickets to lay their eggs. And what would you say the substrate would be for the like, for the laying box? Would be just. It'd be um. Well, if you're in the pet store, um, Eco Earth or coconut fibers would be good for a laying box. Um, pretty much just regular dirt. Uh, or you can get at your pet shop or something. But eco or coconut fibers would be good. Um, it has to be something right like the dirt texture. Um, uh, that's pretty much the best substrate for it. So yeah, and when the beetles eventually they'll just die, and I'll just throw them throw them away, and then I'll take the new mealworms that have hatched, put them back in there. And then the cycle continues, throw them in, take them out, put, them, put me on there, throw out the dead beetles. Yeah, so that's that's basically the normal cycle. It's a cheap way to save money. Um, like, usually you'll spend, like, around $25 for a thousand. But this way you can get, like, a lot, because it's... Some people say that, me that beetles can uh, lay up to a thousand eggs, so... That'd be pretty good. And yeah, it's just a great way to save money. It's fun it's a fun little project to do if you're bored. So yeah, you can even probably sell a batch to your local pet store if you get enough. Yeah, and then uh waxworms, pretty much the same thing as mealworms. Just gotta take a little bit more care and Make sure you have enough mealworms so you can feed your geckos, cause you wouldn't want them going hungry because you you either sold too many or you froze them. Cause I freeze half of mine. You can see in there that Skipper. He hasn't been eating lately, but that's just because he he was in a five-hour car drive, and yeah, to Cape Breton to see Jordan. So <laughs> yeah. He's just still stressed. Yeah. When Dawson's done, I'm going to do my cycle. Are you, da you done, Dawson? Yeah, I'm pretty much done. Okay, so, basically what Dawson just said, I do the exact same. Um, I don't freeze my mealworms. I split them up in half, and I feed one half to my lurp geckos, and I keep the other half for the breeding. Um, what you're going to want to do when you put your mealworms in a container, and you're going to breed them, is you don't really want to mess around with them. You're just going to want to let them be. Make sure they have enough food. Um, maybe some, maybe like a, put a few vegetables in, like a carrot or a potato. Um, that always boosts up their 
um, alchemist, and um, yeah, Milan, Milan, they love they love uh, potato skins. Milan's love potato skins. Yeah, and it's um that's called gut loading, and it really boosts up the nutritional value of them. And if they're full nutrition, then the lactic geckos be full nutrition too. Um, I keep my mealworms in a small breeding box. Um, imagine now I was going to show you what a small breeding box looks like. Um, and I keep uh, crushed up Cheerios and um, the fine dust, or the poop that the mealworms touch. Uh, the pets are, like, uh, the caters that you buy the mealworms from uh, have a lot of that, and I just mix it in. Um, so, um, I just leave the mealworms there, and eventually they'll turn into pupae or pupa or whatever it's called. And then I separate the mealworms from the pupa, put, or pupae, put them in a separate container, and until they, I'll wait until they develop into beetles. I'll leave them in the same container and for up to one to two weeks. And once they've laid their eggs, I've, I'd um, separate the beetles and put them in a different container because they will eat the, the legs they are already laid. And I basically have like a three container set up. Um, I'm going to be breeding mealworms or pardon me, um, crickets very soon. And I think that'd be pretty good because crickets are high in that uh, nutritional value right off the get go. And um, I'm going to start feeding them to my videos. So that's pretty much all I do. I separate them, keep them from eating each other. And yeah, anything to add to us? Not pretty much it, but uh, just the freezing thing. If you have too much mealworms and you don't want them to all hatch or whatever, or something like that, you don't want them to die. If you put them in the freezer, they'll go into hibernation and they'll last a little longer. So that's just an idea there. Yeah, you know, as if you were, um, say, bred too many and you don't have a place to put all those mealworms, um, you know, it's like freeze half. And keep the other head and then defreeze the other ones when you're getting low. Um, it's a pretty bad idea as long as you don't have a place to put them in your freezer. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, you can visit our Facebook page um, or the video to and comment. You can, the link to our Facebook page and our website will be in the description. And anything to add, Dawson? It's pretty much just please subscribe, like our uh, like our videos, go and check out our Facebook page, website, you know all that. Got any questions? Feel free to comment them or go on our website and ask, you know. So yeah. Um, watch our JD Leo's JD project discussion. Um, to find out what we're gonna be doing with the breeding. And um, that was it, guys. Thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Thanks.